Hi, my name is Joni Johnson, and I'm the creator of Blossom Edge. I'll be showing you how to make these following bouquets. Bouquet of Spritz Blossoms. And then a bountiful display of sunflowers using cupcake liners and chocolate drop cookies. Now before you even turn on the oven to start making the cookies for one of these bouquets, there is some information I'd like to share with you to get you started, and I like to refer to this information as the basics. The cookies are attached to wooden skewers, and sometimes it can be fun to tint the skewers green so that the cookie flowers take on a more realistic appearance. To tint the skewers green, first slip on some plastic gloves, place some green food coloring paste into a shallow dish, Add a little water, and then take a piece of cloth or cotton ball and dip it into the coloring, and then tint each skewer individually. Then place the skewers on paper towels to let them dry completely. If you would like to color a large amount of skewers at one time, place some water and an entire jar of green food coloring paste into a vessel large enough so that the skewers can be completely submerged and move about freely. Stir the mixture well and then add the skewers, being sure that they have all been coated with the tinted water. Let the skewers soak for about 30 minutes, giving them a swish now and then. Then remove them and place them on paper towels to dry. Be sure that they are completely dry before using or storing them away. For an economical and simple way to make leaves for your cookie flowers, you can use curling ribbon. Using two or more strips of curling ribbon will give your leaf a fuller appearance. Simply tie the ribbon onto the skewer and curl it with the scissors. Now for a more lush and beautiful way to create the illusion of leaves, use cloth ribbon. To begin, you will need approximately 18 to 36 inches of ribbon per ribbon leaf you are making. It will depend greatly on the size bouquet you are making. To assemble the ribbon leaves, first snip 22 gauge wire into 4 inch strips, cutting one strip for every leaf you are planning to make. Take one of the wire strips and curve it over your little finger so that a hook forms on one end. Take the ribbon and make 2 to 3 loops depending on how full you would like your leaf. and snip off the ribbon. Wrap the ribbon around the skewer. Then take the wire and hook it over the skewer. Bring the end of the wire up and over the hook part and wrap it tightly around the skewer. You can now leave the ribbon on the skewer or slide it off to tuck in where you need it for extra filler in the bouquet. So with all this said and done, I can't wait to show you how to make these bouquets. So let's get started. For those times that you want to make a cookie bouquet, but you don't feel like rolling out the cookie dough or working with the fondant, spritz cookies actually make very beautiful cookie bouquets. So to get started, I have glued the foam into my ceramic basket here, prepared my ribbon leaves. I chose um, orange gumdrops to slide onto the skewers. I have a little bit of extra ribbon here in case I need it for a little bit of extra filler. Um, some malt balls, these will be the center for the Daisy Spritz cookies. Some chocolate chips, this will be our bounding chocolate. Some yellow food coloring paste, and I am going to put this in my cookie dough to give it more of a, a yellow color. And then um, some shredded tissue paper. And um, this is a cookie press. And I am using the little, little Daisy attachment here. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start out by making the cookies. So to get started doing that, um, we're going to load the cookie press with the cookie dough. 
Now to start doing that, there is a ridge around this cookie uh, little plate here and you want to make sure that that is facing down. I'm going to just snap it into place here. Now we're going to screw on the portion here. Okay, and then take some of the spritz cookie dough. You can use your favorite spritz recipe. And just uh, tint it if you wish. I tinted it yellow just to give it more of a daisy look. And then if you make a little log shape, it goes in there a lot easier. And then just screw this on. And then if yours has little grooves on the side of this handle here, make sure, they're, make sure that they are pointing towards the handle. If they're kind of askew or paint, pointed out to the front, it doesn't work. So um, just keep pulling the trigger, and that's going to cause the, the dough to go down here. Okay, now just take um, the tip of a wooden spoon and push down the centers of the cookies. So you want like a little well there. And that's where eventually our little malt ball is going to sit. Okay, well I'm just going to make a few more cookies here. And then just pop them in the oven and bake them according to your recipe. Okay, our cookies have cooled now. We're just going to flip them over here and lay them on our surface. Okay. And then just dip the little gumdrops here, the wide part of the gumdrop, in some chocolate here. And then just place them on the back of the cookies and let this chocolate um, firm up so a very secure bond will form between the um, gumdrop and the cookie. And that's all there is to this part. I'm just going to keep on doing this. Okay, to finish our cookies, we're just going to take the cookie now and the chocolate has been firmly um, has, a firm, has firmly attached the gum gumdrop to the cookie. And we're just going to stick our skewer in here. Okay. And now to add our center, we're just going to dip a gumball or a, a malt ball in the chocolate. You don't want to dip it in too far because then you'll have a big chocolate ring around your malt ball here. And then just stick it on. Push down, and then that's, that's really all there is to making them. Let me make sure that it's on there. Okay, and then I'm just going to finish up with the rest of the cookies here, and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, now it's time to assemble the bouquet. The cookies are all ready, are all ready to go here. So. Um, the first cookie is kind of the tell-all how big the bouquet is going to be. So um, start putting in our cookies here. And I like to start in the middle. And it's a good thing to tuck in your um, shredded paper here as you go. It's, otherwise, it's kind of hard to stick it in at the end.
I like to make plenty of cookies when I'm making my bouquets. You know, it's nice to have the extra cookies in case um, something breaks or um, you want a bigger bouquet or you can even choose your favorite ones if you have enough cookies to choose from. And if you have a lot left over like I do today, I'm sure you know someone who would like to eat them, <laughs> your leftovers. Okay, and there it is, our daisy spritz bouquet. For more information, please go to floralcookiebouquets.com. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make a bouquet of chocolate sunflower cookies. The chocolate cookies that we're going to make today, um, they will actually be coming the, the center of our sunflowers. So to get started, I prepared the container here by putting the rocks in it and securing the foam in here. And the reason why I have the foam mounted up a little higher today is just because the type of the container I'm using here. Um, and to create the petals for the sunflowers, um, we're going to use um, just cupcake liners, just golden cupcake liners and these are Texas or jumbo sized little um, cupcake uh, liners and um, you will need four liners for every flower that you're going to make and I like to make different size cookies when I'm making bouquets so I have just a regular size cupcake liner here and then you will also need some dark green cupcake liners and um, you, they need to be the the regular sized um, you will need uh, two star shaped cutters or just one if you're just going to make the the one sized uh, sunflower and um, the green ribbon for the ribbon leaves, some chocolate little sprinkles or jimmies, and then um, the skewers and uh, with large gumdrops. And I have placed the gumdrops about a half an inch down from the top. And then um, just some filler. So let's get started. Okay, now we're going to make the petals for the sunflowers. And to do that, we're just going to take, oh, you can do it maybe about 10 of the liners here. And um, just flatten them out. And then set one of the, oops, actually before I do that, I'm gonna start with just one here. We're going to make our template. So it's going to lay this in here. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see how the, the edge of the cutter doesn't reach the edge of the liner. Just extend the line up here and make a, a star shape here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of eyeball it to make a star shape here. Okay. Now we're just going to cut this out. Okay, now just trace the star that we made here onto the piece of cardboard. Oh, and I should mention too, when you're making this um, little template here. You want to make sure that the circular portion of the cup cake liner is in, exactly in the middle of the star. So you get a nice even sh star shape here. Okay, and then just trace around the star. and then just cut it out. Okay, and then you'll just wanna repeat this process for the, the smaller star. Okay, and now just 
flatten out a portion of the cupcake liners, place the star in the middle, and then just trace around it. and then cut it out. And I like to cut just inside the pencil lines so when this is all said and done, there aren't any pencil lines remaining on the liners. Okay, now I'm just going to continue doing this until I have enough liners. I need four liners per sunflower that I'm making, so I'm just going to keep cutting out um, these shapes, and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, now we're going to make the portion of the sunflower that's behind the face of the sunflower. And to do that, we're going to take about all oh, five liners or so. You'll just need um, one liner per cookie that you're making. So, okay, so we're just going to cut little triangles here around this circular portion in, he in here and um, just make the triangles about half the length of um, the side of the cupcake liner. So we're just going to go around the edge here. And this doesn't have to be perfect once again. Just start snipping little triangles around the edge here. Okay, Okay. so now we have um, a couple of these done and I'm going to continue finishing up here and then um, we'll start to uh, make our chocolate brownie cookies. So the center of our sunflowers are going to be chocolate brownie cookies. So I'm just going to give you my recipe that I use for that. The first thing you will want to do is sift the following ingredients into a large mixing bowl. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, four tablespoons of cocoa powder, one teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Then into a small mixing bowl put a half a cup of butter flavored shortening, one cup of firmly packed brown sugar, two eggs, one tablespoon of real vanilla extract, three tablespoons of milk, one tablespoon of molasses. And beat this well and then pour this mixture into the flour mixture and beat until well combined. Okay, our cookie dough is ready now. So now we can start um, getting our liners ready here. Okay, so you will need about two level scoops of um, the chocolate cookie dough here make a center of the jumbo sized um, sunflower and then just place it in the middle of the liner take your hand and kind of smash it down Oops, stick. and then you just want to make sure that the cookie dough is almost the size of the circle circular pattern in the liner here and then peel it off and then place it in the little jimmies here press down so that they stick and then put it back in here if you notice any bare spots just sprinkle some jimmies on here push them down in there into the dough so they stick Take off the excess. 
And then take a knife and push all the little loose jimmies into the dough around the side. That'll give you a nice clean edge. Okay, and then just lay it on a cookie sheet, ungreased cookie sheet. And then if you are making regular sized um, sunflowers, you will need just one scoop. And then just do the same process as before. Just smash it down until it goes to the edge. And then dip it back into the jimmy, or dip it into the jimmies here. He looks pretty well covered, so I don't think I'll put any more jimmies on him. Just tap the edges. And then we're going to bake these. Um, actually, I would probably bake these on separate cookie sheets because they're two different sizes. Um, the jumbo size um, will take about nine minutes in a 350 degree oven. And the smaller size here will take about eight minutes. So I'm just going to finish these off and pop them into the oven. Okay, our cookies have been baked and they are cool now. So now we can assemble, it, assemble our uh, sunflowers. So to do that, the first thing that we're going to do is take one of these little green uh, little cutouts that we made here and we're going to stick the point of the skewer into the center of the liner here and push it down. Stick that right there. And then separate out three of the yellow liners here. And then Stick the skewer in the center again. This time with the points facing up. Okay, and then just fan them out a little bit here. And now take one of the cookies, find the middle of the cookie and then just stick it in into the center. Move the petals around a little bit if you need to. And there we have our first sunflower cookie. And I'm just going to continue finishing up the rest of the cookies. Okay, the cookies have been assembled now, so now we can um, start putting together the bouquet. To start doing that, I think I'm going to make a ribbon leaf here and um, get that started. first flower is kind of the tell-all how big your bouquet is going to get. So um, we'll eyeball it here and see what we get here. Adding filler now will be a lot easier than waiting until your bouquet is already assembled. It's easier to stick in, stick it in as you go. For more information, please go to floralcookiebouquets.com.
there's a bare spot back here and um, you don't want to make a full ribbon leaf here so this is a time when it's nice to have a little bit of extra ribbon that you can just tuck in where you need it to fill a little bare spot so I'm just gonna tuck it in back here with the skewer okay. so this is the bouquet of chocolate sunflowers What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? Or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. You can learn about the latest news through our truly local newscast. We cover and air around 150 high school sporting events every year. For our cities, we air parades and city meetings that you can watch whenever you want. Then, any citizen of our cities can create and share their own original content. We'll even teach you how to use the equipment too. We have always provided you with a connected community experience. And as life gets busier than ever, we will continue to engage, inform, and inspire through CCX Media. So you can stay connected to the place you call home.